Let me now welcome Professor Tariq Ramadan to begin today's dialogue. Professor Ramadan. The reason why we have begun, while the, even though the meal is not over, I think that you all would agree with me, you would rather eat up his words than the food in front of you. So, Professor Ramadan. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله thank you dear friends and sisters and brothers thank you for this invitation here in Penang and from the Penang Institute and as I just heard it's a place where you welcome thoughts and and critical thinking so no wonder that you will listen a few things that might not be exactly what you think about what is happening in the Middle East and uh, uh, quite critical about uh, the way we have to deal with the issue today when it comes to uh, our understanding of uh, what are the Islamic principles, what are the uh, uh, principles of democracies in our world and in which way we have to deal with the issue or at least proposing some of the questions that should be asked today in Muslim majority countries and also uh, in the current situation in the world today. Uh, the starting point of my discussion is, uh, uh, as we have the subtitle here, is the awakening of the Muslim world. And it's also something that I, I have been writing uh, about in the last book. The last book is called The Arab Awakening, Islam and the New Middle East. And I have been trying to uh, analyze what is happening today in the Middle East. We were talking right now about Egypt. We also are dealing with what is happening in Tunisia, in uh, Libya, in Syria, where the situation is quite dramatic these days. And uh, uh, we have, and not to forget, also Yemen and Bahrain. Even though the media are not talking about what is happening, we still are facing repression and torture and this is where the media are playing a very uh, I would say clearly a dirty game by uh, uh, shedding some lights on the people that we are supporting and forgetting the people that we are not supporting and especially when it comes to people who are resisting uh, the petro monarchies uh, I'm not sure that the world is expecting from Muslims there to speak about democracy for many reasons. And this is where uh, I'm much more cautious than many of the people I'm hearing these days about what is happening in the Middle East. I think uh, by being uh, focused on the political side of the story, we don't get the whole, uh, the comprehensive understanding that uh, it might be that uh, all these uh, uh, trends and movements and uprisings that are happening in the Middle East are also due not for political reasons because people are celebrating democracy within, but some economic forces need some change within for geostrategic econ economic reasons. And uh, I think that we are too much focusing on the political discussion and that not getting the, wrong, the right picture when it comes to uh, uh, the reasons, the causes, and also the objectives. So I might be, you know, the, the, the way I'm, I'm phrasing it in the book, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic. The only thing that I get now coming from the people is this energy coming from the people at the grassroots level that we can change, we can remove the dictators, and for almost half a century, this was perceived as impossible in MENA, North Africa and middle, the Middle East. Now something has changed in the minds, something has changed in the mindsets, and this is positive. Now what is going to happen 
is still too early to assess, too early to conclude, and we have to be cautious. Having said that about um, uh, my understanding of or my caution with what is happening, I would say that uh, uh, what I really uh, uh, want to set when it comes to democracy, and you have in front of you someone who is coming from Europe, the old continent, where in the old continent we have been rightly for many reasons celebrating the democratic models, the old democratic models, much before even the United States of America. It's the old continent and this is where democracy matters and even for some people democracy is coming from the West and from Europe. But I can tell you today that when we are talking about democracy and we should come with a better, a deeper understanding of democracy and especially from an Islamic viewpoint, and this is the title of my talk, at the same time we should be very, very much aware that our democracies today are in deep crisis everywhere. In the old continent, in the European countries, we celebrate democracy, but the citizens are taking into the street because they are not happy with the democratic models. Yes, we can celebrate secularism, but now the people are saying, it might be that you don't have a religion that is taking over the state, but you have economic institutions that are deciding on behalf of citizens, and we haven't elected them. So what is happening today is multinationals, is transnational corporations being very powerful, and we have technocrats that are taking over in Italy, taking over in Greece, taking over in Spain, and these people are deciding. So to celebrate democracy uh, is good, to be naive about the challenges of the democratic systems today, and following in the footsteps of the West and saying this is the way is crazy, is madness. So the point for any uh, Muslim majority country, any southern country, is not only to celebrate the principles, is to think about a new model, a new way to deal with the democratic principles, not to compromise the uh, democratic principles for the sake of economic interest, but to be clear that we are not going to compromise on the duties and the rights of the citizens for either uh, uh, economic reasons or geostrategic reasons. It's very important to get it right, to come with the principles and to see, to think about models that are efficient, that are protecting the citizens, and to not to foolish ourselves in the way we are dealing with the principles today and talking about politics while other people let us talk about freedom and they decide for us about what is going to be the future of our societies in economic terms. Though there is no way to talk about the Middle East, to talk about the North African country without talking about the economic parameters that are necessary to get through democracy. No economic stability, no democracy. No economic independence, no democracy. You can decide whatever, you can put whoever you want now in Egypt. Any Islamist in Tunisia, if he doesn't have or she doesn't have money, if he doesn't have economic autonomy, talk about what you want, the democracy is going to be under control. And democracies under control could give some freedom to the people as to the way of life to feel a bit more free when they speak, but it doesn't mean that you have to get, you are going to get dignity for the citizens. So we have to be clear on the complexity of this and to have a comprehensive approach. So it's not because we are talking about religion and Islam and democracy and all this that we should have a very simplistic way of dealing with politics. Anyone who is dealing with politics should understand the complexity of what it means to be involved in political terms when it comes to independence, when it comes to freedom, when it comes to freedom of expression, when it comes to social justice. The starting point of demo democracy is social justice. You cannot say to your citizens, you are all equal, and then when it comes to opportunity in the job market, when it comes to schools, when it comes to education, there is no social justice. The starting point of democracy is social justice, and social justice this is in fact an economic reality that you have to deal with. If you don't deal with this, if you avoid talking about that, these are only words. You are happy with the principles, but you know that you are not going to be consistent in the daily uh, uh, reality and the daily 
uh, experience of the citizens. So this is also something that we have to get upstream from the discussion because once again, very often the Muslims and because Islam is not well perceived today, there is a negative perception of Islam and the Muslims are very often on the defensive. They keep on wasting that time showing how much we are open to the democratic principles. And that's fine. Go ahead. Say that you are good, that you are just, that you love freedom. That's fine. But at the end, this is not what matters. What matters is how are we going to implement these principles knowing that if you don't get it right, if you don't have the understanding of the economic factors, the geostrategic factors, and who is playing now, who is pushing and praying on the ground, you are not going to be serious about this. It's just theoretical discussion just to be acknowledged. And very often, I'm sorry to say by the West, we have a Western complex or a complex towards the West which we, see, we keep on repeating, we don't care, but in fact we care. And the way we don't care is just proving that we care. About what they think, about what is coming from there. So I think that the first step here is an intellectual liberation, and especially here in the region and in the, the Middle East, is some, okay, what are the principles, what are the realities, and what are the challenges, and all the challenges, geostrategic, economic, political, and even cultural. No democracy without independent culture. The world culture, what we call globalization in cultural terms, is another way to speak about westernization. And world culture now is westernization. So we also have to get this very, very right from the very beginning. If you want an independence from within, we need to deal with culture. And very often politicians and even economists uh, I don't know why, we take culture as a secondary issue. It's as if it's not so important. It's critical. Culture, when it comes to independence and, and intellectual independence in your country, you are going to be free with your mind the way you resist the world culture and this globalized culture that we are witnessing now. Is how do you celebrate at the regional level, the national level, the way you deal with your own culture. No wonder that what we see today in America, what we see today in the European countries, the more advanced democracies in the world is people coming back to populism and my region, my identity. You know this identity business? This is something which matters. Why? Because if you don't deal with the global world, you will have people reacting and being defensive with their cultures. A defensive culture is the opposite of a free mind. Because you are the, the object of any populist discourse. And you know what? Even among Muslims, there are a great deal of populists. It's not a Western disease. It's an international disease. If you lose your principles as citizens, you become the object of populist with your emotions. <laughs>